Good day, everyone. This is Martin Petella, life enthusiast, health coach. Today's October 16, 2022, and uh, I'm sort of in, in a string of continuing series of the uh, diseases, as in, based on the government statistics alone, what is the popular way to end your life prematurely and needlessly? We've already covered the number one, which is the cardiovascular, and number two, which is cancer, and number three, which is not showing on the statistics, but it's the medical interventions. These would be either drugs prescribed as they should be, but they kill you, mistakes made, they kill you. Of course, th these are the deaths, right? What they're not tracking on these statistics are the... Uh, injuries that happen and then of course these injuries will continue to affect you for the rest of your days or the clients patients days until they possibly die of something different like it's not going to be tracked as a medical injury but it will be one the um i i take an what's the word I don't agree with how the government's classifying illnesses. Well, I don't agree with how the mainstream medical system works to begin with, because it's based on a lie. And I'll talk about that some more. I think I've talked about it in the past. We were talking about monomorphic versus pleomorphic. Monomorphic is based on the Louis Pasteur theory where a microbe or something, a germ, it's known as germ theory. Germ ar arrives from outside, from without, and affects the body. As it, like, for example, tuberculosis, the, uh, I forget what it's called, Bacillus tuberculi tuberculinum or something, I forget. Actually, this Latin is not my strength. <laughs> Anyway, this bacillus that causes tuberculosis is acquired from outside, gets into the body and causes it. And this was uh, supported by Robert Koch, K-O-C-H, a German scientist from about 150 years ago who established the Koch principles or postulates, they were called. And they were four, which meant that if you wanted to have a microbe cause something, you needed to be able to find it in sick people, not find it in the healthy people, be able to ice extract it from the uh, sick people, isolate it, give it to the healthy people and make them sick, and then further extract it from the newly infected and give it to more healthy people and make them sick again. So that was the series of steps to you, you needed to take in order to prove beyond any doubt that this thing that you have acquired is going to be the cause of that illness. So this held, I mean, you could do that with syphilis where a spirochete will cause it. You can do it with gonococcus where gonorrhea will come from. Those are things that are indeed passed from person to person and are isolatable and are provable to cause an illness. Modern virology though, doesn't follow that. They have modified it. They have modified it in such way that you don't have to isolate anything and you don't need to prove that passing this one isolated thing will actually cause the illness that you're supposedly are causing by this thing. And this, this has been the main contention point in this latest episode called uh, C-19, where um, nothing was ever isolated. <clears throat> there is not, and never has been, a thing called Corona SARS-CoV-2 isolated. 
And it's never been proven that you can pass it around because it was never isolated. And then this famous PCR test that has been used for that or for diagnosis proves nothing because um, it can only identify a presence of dead tissue or bits and pieces. What, what you're doing with that PCR test is you're taking a snippet, a genetic piece, not the whole thing, just a piece, and you're looking for that piece. I saw a beautiful talk by Dr. Tom Cowan, where he was explaining this thing and the way he was going about it. He was saying that um, it's like this. For example, you decide that caffeine is the uh, identifiable thing. So you say this person has caffeine in their blood and uh, you're going to go by proving that caffeine does it by messing around with, let's just say ground up coffee. But the truth is that caffeine is in many, many different things. It's in chocolate, cocoa, it's in tea, it's in other substances or other sources and so even though you have identified caffeine somewhere down the line using a pcr test you do not know where it come from you only know that you have caffeine in the blood anyway so that's that's the uh, germ theory and the diagnostics and all of that the other part or the opposite philosophy is known as pleomorphism or the terrain theory in French milieu. And that's, that's a line that's about contemporary with Pasteur. This is, we're looking back into the 1800s, 1850 to 1890. And uh, Béchamp was his contemporary and Béchamp came up with the idea that uh, it was the terrain that caused it. And there's a reasonable way to demonstrate it. Let's just say that we have a flu epidemic arrive in the school and in the class out of the 30 children, 10 get sick and 20 don't. We declare it an epidemic and we declare it that the flu is causing it. But explain to me why 10 did get sick and 20 didn't. And the explanation, according to Béchamp, is uh, it's the terrain. The 10 that did get ill were susceptible and the 20 that were did not get ill were not susceptible because their terrain was in good order. And it's the terrain that decides whether you do or don't succumb to some sort of a thing, some sort of an illness. And then, then we go dive deeper into the terrain theory using pleomorphism and in that, we start understanding that it's the health of the internal workings. And that is largely determined by our intakes, inputs. Uh, I've uh, been calling it the four, <laughs> originally I call it the four horsemen of illness, but who knows? We have toxicity, malnutrition, stagnation, and trauma. And the toxicity, of course, is present of stuff that's within that shouldn't be there. Malnutrition is absence of stuff that should be here but isn't. Stagnation is this rotting, a swampiness, the lack of movement, lack of circulation, lack of dynamic balance where breathing is an example. Inhale, exhale, get stuff in, get stuff out. Ingestion, digestion, elimination, that's another of the dynamic balances. If you put stuff in, you need to do something about it. That's movement, opposite of stagnation. And then you need to get it out of there. And if you don't get it all out of there, the all that you don't want, then you're becoming more toxified. So we go back. These are all connected, right? Trauma stands kind of alone, which is uh, the invisible stuff, emotional injuries, spiritual well-being, electromagnetics, um, electrics, groundings, and so on. Somebody pushed a question in here 
earlier saying, would I talk about grounding as we find that people who are not doing it are finding themselves in a bit of trouble. So I'll, I'll come back to that in a sec. So we have the monomorphic theory or the germ theory con contrasted with the uh, uh, terrain theory that is pleomorphic. And what's interesting is we can actually find things in the blood through dark field or side light microscopy. What happens is that electron microscopes that the mainstream people use, or even ordinary, ordinary microscopes, most times they look at it straight down. So the lighting comes straight from the top and they only see things in a flat way. And especially with the electron microscopes, because we, in fact, you need to kill the thing that you're going to look at and dust it with teeniest metal particles so that the electrons bounce off of it. So you're only looking at dead things, dead things that way. The live blood analysis and the side light microscopes and or the dark field microscopy is using side light and you're looking at things in in their living transformative way like you you're, you're uh, needing to take a fresh drop you don't take much you just need one drop of blood you put it on the slide put it in the microscope and for the next 30 minutes the blood is still alive and you're watching it do its thing and um I posted a link to a company called Biomed X, which uh, is kind of interesting. I have here in my uh, in my library this booklet, "How You Rot and Rust," and it's signed by Steve Denk. And Steve Denk is a very interesting fellow um, who, well, he wrote this. And I think he may be one of the principals behind the um, company, Biomedics. And uh, here is a really cool thing to just so take a good look at this. So what you're looking at here, uh, when my finger's pointing, that's a picture of live healthy blood. And then this other one that I'm pointing at now, that's the sick blood. And uh, if you were to look at it, you would see that the uh, the sick blood it was of a person who was uh, told by their physicians that uh, their cancer progressed and that there was nothing left and uh, that they expect to be dead within 30 days. And so what happened was the, the husband of this woman brought her to this microscopist and uh, in, in here, Steve says, the picture of a cancer patient and the doctor said he did not know if he could help, but he pulled four key nutritional substances off his shelf and gave it to her. These were a total vitamin and mineral complex digestive enzyme and proanthocyanidin in the form of pycnogenol, which you would be familiar with as pine bark extract. And heavy, heavy duty metabolic uh, body enzymes. So that was the set. And uh, da -da -da. anyway, this woman lived. So that's, um, where am I with that? So the method, right? The living blood is able to indicate and show us what's going on in the body. And so when we're looking at it, we're actually able to determine that there's something in balance or out of balance. And we're able to see whether we're helping or not helping with time. 
one of the most important important bits how you rot and rest right so if you if you could um, understand rusting is oxidation to oxidize something like for example iron you take Fe and you oxidize it with oxygen, you end up with Fe2O3, which is your basic rust. And you see that on your auto automobile after you've driven it for a few years in salted environments. And the saltiness of the brine that's sprayed on it is the cause of rapid aging oxidation. And oxidation is that of stealing of an electron. When you take away an electron, you have create, you have created an oxidant, which is acid, and it's hungry for an electron. It wants to find one and take it away from something, which rusting as such is sign of aging, right? Rusting on a human body looks like uh, wrinkles and uh, loss of function and uh, other well the indignities of aging for example cross-linking of uh, leather right like you oh rubber rubber would be even a better thing on the automobile right either the wiper blades or the tires perhaps they will um they will I'm just being disturbed by this telephone that somebody chose to dial, which is in my office here. Okay, give me a sec. I'll just regroup here. I just want to see if there's anybody on our support line that says that it's away, not available. That's too bad. I was hoping that one of my colleagues was going to be at work today. Oh, they, it, they are. It says it's online, but we're not there. Okay, so I'm going to restart this. Oxidation, for example, on an automobile, the rubber parts, such as the uh, rubber bits on your windshield wiper, as, as it becomes more oxidized, cross-linked, and becomes brittle, less flexible, and less able to do its job. Well, you see that on a human body too. You can uh, see that my skin is less flexible, kind of puckery, and takes longer to um, takes longer to uh, return back to its original state and stuff like that. So this relates back to grounding. What happens is that. Uh, I'm just going to turn down this sound. This is ridiculous. Um, what happens is that uh, ions arrive from the sun. The star that we are nearby, the sun, sends us electrons, and they are arriving into the ionosphere as ionized radiation, and that is the positive pole, positive charge. These, these are the electrons, right? Like you have the alpha, beta, gamma radiation, right? Alpha radiation, as far as I know, are plain electrons. Beta radiation is uh, helium. Yeah. Helium cores without the uh, electrons on that. And that's something I should probably read up on before I open my mouth saying what's what, but I believe that's what that is. Anyway, electrons, abundance of electrons arrives in the ionosphere. And the way it's being rebalanced in our world is through lightning. So you have positive charge in the sky, negative charge on the ground. The negative side donates electrons. The positive side takes them away. So the rebalancing takes place when the lightning storms take place. So the ground becomes balanced, or pardon me, the ground becomes rich in electrons. Now, how do we acquire that? 
So the most common way for us these days is that we um, eat food that's grown on the ground. So like a cucumber that's still raw or carrot or celery or whatever it is, the water and the substances within that are rich in electrons. They're able to donate these electrons. So until you cook them, as long as they're raw, so you can, for example, juice the carrots or or eat the cucumbers or do whatever, you acquire these electrons. These are the donors of electron, also known as antioxidant, because taking away of electron is an oxidative reaction, right? So the antioxidant, of course, is something that will neutralize that, give the electron back. And the most common ones that we have in our body would be the vitamins, vitamin C especially, and Bs, and all of the other ones, A, D, E, K, C, B, dorks. And also minerals, right? So the alkaline things are things like calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, and the acidic things would be the the hydrogen bits that are associated with the acid. So like, for example, sulfuric acid, H2SO4, the hydrogen is uh, the two minuses, did I say it right? And SO4 would be two pluses. No, I'm saying, I'm saying it backwards. <laughs> this science stuff is confusing. So, for example, CaCO3, CaCO3, a calcium has the two pluses, Ca plus plus, two electrons missing, and CO3, uh, that would be carbonate, two electrons donating. So, what we need to do here is understand the following. When we are touching the ground, whether we put our hands in the ground, as in gardening or crawling, crawling on all fours, touching the grass, that, touching the moist ground, touching trees, tree hugging, ha, or walking barefoot on the beach, as long as it's moist, because it needs to be conductive, and as long as our foot is touching it directly, we are recharging. We are transferring the electrons from the ground into our body, causing an anti-aging reaction because we are reversing the rusting, reversing the oxidation. Now, the opposite of that is reduction. So reduction is the giving back of the electrons. And what's interesting is that uh, that's associated with alkalinity. So that's why you hear a lot of stories in the folklore is to alkalize is, in, is important because to alkalize means you will reduce the acid imbalance. You will reduce the antioxidant, you will, yeah, you will reduce the oxidative stress with the antioxidant, which is the alkalizing reduction like the calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium that are being brought in. Those are the reducing, alkalizing elements. Now, I wanted to talk about the statistics, which is the government tracks these things separately. Like they track things like stroke or arthritis or diabetes or fibromyalgia or whatever else, all of these other things are tracked as a separate item. The, the mainstream medical people like to catalog things by geography. They will have names for these chronic degenerative inflammatory conditions. So for example, you get a stroke, which is a thrombus, a piece of a clot, right? Clot will travel through your bloodstream 
and lodge itself somewhere in your brain, blocking a blood vessel that is supposed to supply oxygen and nutrients to your brain. And when you have that event take place, a piece of your brain will die from starvation, from lack of oxygen, right? When, when I cut off the oxygen 100%, as in choke you or make the heart stop, the whole body dies. If I do a small part with this clot, then I kill only a small part of you. If it happens in your brain, that's known as the stroke. If it happens in your heart, it's known as an infarction or heart attack. There is another way to damage your brain, which is through a bleeder. If a blood vessel bursts and breaks open and a whole lot of blood rushes in, causing a swelling and pressure and all of that, that can create also a brain problem. But I wanted to just mention the this type of stroke. So that has a name, right? But there are all these other inflammatory diseases that have their name, like uh, the body will trigger the immune system to try and uh, attack certain tissues depending on what's breaking down. So if you have a problem in your thyroid, uh, it will either become hypothyroid, which is known as Hashimoto's, or hyperthyroid, which will be, be known as Graves' disease. You will have uh, a dysregulation of your dopamine and it will be known as Parkinson's disease or you will have some nervous function and it will known as, be known as multiple sclerosis, or you can have a serious headache and it's known as my migraine, or you will have vertigo, which is known as the many years syndrome, and you can have skin problems. Vitiligo is when your pigmentation disappears and scleroderma is when the um, skin becomes dry and brittle, like turning into solid, leather-like. Uh, soft tissues, fibromyalgia, right? That's the uh, um, fibrosis of the, uh, um, mm -hmm. what is it called? All around the muscles, right? Um, then there are all these other syndromes like certain liver disease, cirrhosis of the liver, or, or illnesses of the gut, such as you have mm, Crohn's disease when there's inflammation in the small intestine. Um, I don't know. There are about 200 named diseases, named diagnoses, I should call them. And uh, they all have broadly similar shared cause. And that cause is a dysfunction and that dysfunction is fired by these four underlying causes which i named before toxicity malnutrition stagnation and trauma and they could be isolated in a specific spot right we were talking about for example breast cancer or prostate cancer that's triggered by the highest concentration of the problem fatty tissue will um, concentrate toxins more than muscle tissue. Toxins are always pushed aside into the areas of uh, lower circulation, which, so the highest circulation of course would be your circulatory system and your heart. And then your vital organs are protected at all costs. So we're pushing things off into your belly fat or your cartilage or your bone. But unfortunately, the uh, sheath of your nerve is also made of fat and your brain is also made of fat. So there's this complication. So what's important here? Going full circle on statistics is that there is this high chance of you living a, a deeply affected life with unhealth that is caused by an inflammatory condition. And inflammation is an oxidative type of reaction. 
In fact, every cell that's trying to repair itself uses inflammation as a method by which it's trying to repair. And there are five symptoms to inflammation. Um, redness, swelling, heat, pain, and loss of function. So you can see that on the surface, you hit your thumb with a hammer, you will experience pain, then it gets red, then it becomes swollen, and then it becomes, uh, well, loss of function, you'll notice, because you can't touch it, and really throbbing pain, and so on. But that's what's happening, is that the body is sending repairs. It's sending uh, its functional equivalents of the repair crew. And it's happening by raising the voltage. The normal voltage in, uh, in a healthy cell is slightly alkaline, at minus 25 millivolt, which corresponds with 7.35 on the pH scale. So it's not a zero millivolt, uh, which would be 7.0 on the pH scale. It's a little bit off to the alkaline side. And when it comes to rebuilding something, the body will raise the voltage to negative 70 or negative 90 millivolt in order to um, repair the cell. What's interesting about the measuring of the uh, voltages, um, as the voltage is losing its electrons, which means that you're taking it out of the alkaline side, the negative, to zero and then past the zero, at about plus 15 millivolt is where cancer exists and uh, the cell loses its integrity and uh, it will die because it will just lose its ability to, uh, to function normally. And it will just be on, <laughs> the cell goes to the dark side as we called it, where it will switch from respiration to fermentation and it will behave as though it were not part of the human body. It will behave as a separate organism. And it only knows one way, right? It only knows how to pull more resources into itself and grow because it's just confused. So at the beginning or before I started this, I posted an article, which was this article written about Dennis Myers. Dennis Myers deceased somewhere around 2010, I think. I was um, studying his information, reading his information. That was basically when I was learning about all of this. And he was um, explaining the difference between monomorphism and pleomorphism. Dennis's website was called Euro American Health. And uh, I, as a, as a tribute to him, put a lot of those, those pages onto the Life Enthusiast website. And so the, the article that I posted about chronic disease, it says the following, a chronic degenerative disease is not caught. It evolves, it develops. <clears throat> and these uh, microorganisms will evolve and develop or rise out of nothing in the devitalized tissues of the chronic degenerative disease. And these are the weak devitalized organs. And so you end up with this, we mentioned cirrhosis in the liver or uh, weakness in the discs in the spine or whatever. And uh, the highest pollution and the most uh, acid or out of range are the ones that are the most sick. And so they cannot be conquered by antibiotics. They are beyond reach. Not even light therapy or ozone therapy. Because the body itself will try and decompose itself. Like as the tissues are dying, 
uh, the, their decomposers, which is fungus and yeast, are going to try and decompose the body. And that's the degenerative disease. And Dennis has identified uh, that mineralization is one of the most important things. The acid base balance. Acid being the, well, acidic and base being the alkaline. And you need to return the mineralization into balance because if you don't have that, you're in trouble. And uh, the mineralization is a big challenge because uh, I'll quote something here from this book again, where did I put it over here? So um, there is a reference to study about miner minerals. Check this out. In, um, I'll just read it. Today, the food we get at the local grocery store is not what it used to be. For example, in 1948, you could buy spinach that had 158 milligrams of iron per 100 grams of plant. By 1965, that dropped to 27 milligrams. By 1973, it was averaging 2.2 milligrams. So this is in 25 years, it has gone from 158 to 2.2. So you would have to eat 75 times as much of the 1973 spinach to make up the 1948 nutrient. Follow? This is primarily the result of the industrial agricultural methods. NPK, which is the fertilizer, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, cause plants to grow vigorously, looking healthy, looking great, but they are lacking the basic nutrients. And these nutrients have been actually depleted from soils, like multiple generations, you grow, 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 without um, proper rotation, proper restoration, proper remineralization. So you grow things that look right, but aren't right. And uh, this, this other thing is on my website as well. In U.S. Senate document 264 of the 74th Congress, second session, it was 1936, it was stated, our fire farm soils and our range soils are depleted of minerals and the crops, grains, fruits, vegetables, nuts that are grown on these depleted farms and range soils are minerally deficient and the people who eat them get mineral deficiency diseases. And what do you think the government's done about it? Nothing. In fact, it just simply fell in with the chemical industry and with the big agriculture industries, and it's just more of the same. So pick your disease, choose your imbalance. Cancer, arthritis, diabetes, heart disease, chronic fatigue, allergies, obesity, all of that. Hmm. So I'm going to just tell you something about minerals. This is again from the book, Steve Dank. An early selenium deficiency shows up as H spots, dark spots on your face or on your hands or whatever. We know them as H spots. What did you know? Selenium deficiency. Hmm. Chromium and vanadium can help prevent diabetes and has been seen to reverse diabetes. And uh, vanadium is perhaps able to replace or regulate insulin. Copper deficiency is implicated in aneurysms in brain, in aorta, and so on. Low copper is also implicated in gray hair, skin wrinkles, varicose veins, and sagging body parts. Magnesium, is quite possibly the most important mineral for the reduction of coronary heart disease. Tin deficiency is implicated in male pattern baldness. Boron helps keep calcium in the bones, helps women preserve and make estrogen, and helps men keep testosterone levels. Boron, boron affects alertness. Boron can help eliminate arthritis. What's really interesting is that 
we have uh, partnered up with a company called CR Supplements. C, yeah, CR Supplements. And uh, they make ionic liquid minerals. And there's the very long list, the full lineup of it. Um, and they run with um, zinc, copper, selenium, magnesium, potassium, you name anyone. And they, they put them individually and we have them available in regular strength, which is take a teaspoon per day. And it's what's interesting is that they are supremely absorbable, right? Like once they go ionic, they are absorbable. When you're taking minerals that are bound in other substances, they're not necessarily absorbed. These ionic ones are. Anyway, we have them in pints and quarts and some of them in gallons and some of them in 4x strength where the daily dose instead of a teaspoon would be a quarter teaspoon so that you don't have to ship as much of the liquid. So to carry on, calcium deficiency is implicated in over 140 different diseases that include Bell's palsy, osteoporosis, receding gums, arthritis, hypertension, kidney stones, insomnia, bone spurs, heel spurs, calcium deposit, cramps, twitches, PMS, low back pain, diabetes. And calcium, although implicated in many diseases, is very misunderstood and overprescribed. People don't necessarily need more calcium. They may need potassium and magnesium to help balance things. And that will depend on your metabolic type, right? Like we have found that, for example, the fast oxidizer needs a lot more calcium than anyone else, any of the other types. We have also found, for example, that the slow oxidizer needs more copper than other types. But here goes. Potassium and magnesium, along with organic sodium, are some of the most important minerals for rebalancing the electrical properties of the cell, for administering excess acidity, and to help balance calcium. So it's not just calcium alone. You actually need to do that. And guess what? What you need is vegetables grown in healthy soils. And uh, with that, what you need is something that's full strength. How do we compensate for that now? Well, we have found that algae, such as chlorella or spirulina, that's grown in ponds with a lot of minerals, is able to do the compensation. And so with that, we have, of course, the Exula superfoods, right? They are based on these concentrates. So we are actually supplying you with this highly mineralized uh, nutrients. So when you take that, when you have a sufficient amount of the um, what is that? What is that thing called? I'm trying to think of that name. Foo, 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 cyano something, cyanocobalamin? No, let me, that's, that's not the word. I'm sick, I'm just going to find it here. Mm. It's not coming to me. But here, here's what it does. Less oxidative stress, improved blood vessel function, lower rates of cardiovascular disease, longer telomeres, or being younger. Oh, now I finally found it. It's called phycocyanin. And phycocyanin is uh, that it involves, uh, well, it's, it's a blue-green algae type of a coloring, right? <clears throat> it's the blue-green algae that, that contains that. Anyway, once you start ingesting these things, here, here's the list. Decrease inflammation, strengthen immune function, decrease oxidative stress, protect heart, protect against cancer, balance blood sugar, improve liver function, protect your brain, increase energy levels. 
And that's just a standard list, right? You can apply that to uh, eating spirulina, or you can apply it to any other healthy, richly mineralized plant. So I'm going to just finish this list. It's not very long now. Magnesium helps conduct electrical messages between the neurons of the body. People get irrational when potassium levels are low. Zinc is involved in over 200 brain enzyme interactions. Drinking zinc mixed with distilled water can stop anorexia nervosa within a day. Zinc deficiency symptoms include loss of taste and smell. This thing was published in the year 2000. Zinc deficiency symptoms include loss of taste and smell. What did we hear were the symptoms of the famous corona? Hmm. Loss of taste and smell, right? What is the safest way to replete zinc in your cells? Well, supplement with zinc and add to it hydroxychloroquine or quinine. Quinine is the thing that makes the tonic that you usually mix with gin, gin and tonic. The bitter stuff is that which is also found in the natural ways of making the quinine or the chloroquine. You take the lemon and the grapefruit peels and you boil them. That's the bitter stuff that comes out of that. And you drink that, and supplement zinc, and you will not be losing your sense of smell and taste. Zinc deficiency in children results in moodiness, depression, irritability, photophobia, that's light sensitivity, antagonism, I guess disagreeable, temper tantrum, and learning problems. Children who do poorly on achievement tests tend to have low iron levels. These children also display disruptive, impulsive, and irritable behavior in the classrooms. Children who have high lead levels do poorly overall, and uh, they end up being medicated with drugs like ADD and uh, all of that chemical stuff. But you don't need to drag your children, you just need to fix their minerals. And cigarette smoke is rich in cadmium. That's the blue coloring of the smoke. Cadmium is neurotoxic and... Um, a low zinc to cadmium ratio is implicated in learning disabilities. And coffee is a major source of cad cadmium in the diet. It's in the bean, so decaffeinated doesn't help. And zinc is needed to balance cadmium. And too much copper is an irritant to the brain. People with high copper end up being super aggressive, just horrible people just fighters and miserable, ugly. High manganese levels show statistically high correlation with violent behavior. So that's manganese as well. And lithium balances and helps control manganese. So lithium, manganese, so the supplementation with lithium would indeed tend to balance things out. And rubidium deals with manic depression and the right ratio of copper to zinc in the cells acts as an antioxidant. So that's, that's just a rundown of the most common trace minerals of which we can get really decent supply. So we have this, one of the products that we have is, uh, we call it the black mica water. It's in the mineral, in trace minerals. Uh, and, um, and then, of course, you can pick them individually if you want to just focus on any one specific. So where did I get with this? I'm doing an explanation that the uh, terrain is going to be predictive in how your health is going to turn out. The quality of the electrolyte within you is going to be indicative of the quality of your life, of your health. 
And so when we are nutrying, yeah, how's the word? You can nutrate away deficiencies by supplying the correct nutrients. In fact, one of the products that we have in the in the site, it's called Empower Plus. That's a product developed by a Canadian fellow, Tony, Tony, what's his last name? It's not coming to me. Anyway, uh, Tony developed it as a means of helping his family. His wife suicided because of her manic depression. And he was watching two of his children, a daughter and a son, head in that same direction. And he was talking to a friend of his who was in the hog business. And they were talking about nutrating away. He said, oh yeah, hogs, when they're, when they're nutritionally deficient, they will be, become very aggressive. They will bite each other's tails and ears and be very disagreeable with one another, just won't get along, just super aggressive. And you renew their trace mineral balances and uh, they become happy again. Just get along. And so what Tony told me, I met him in person, he told me that uh, the, the formula that, that he put together, he said, it was very precise, 10% out of the ratios, and it would stop working. It was required to have all of the things in it. And the way they make it is they, uh, they do a process that requires the uh, minerals and the vitamins to be bound. We do the same thing for the uh, Exula products. All of the Exula vitamins and minerals are fed to Baker's yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, and the yeast will absorb it into itself and make it absorbable, bioavailable. So there is a huge difference between uh, shoveling minerals into your body in the form of rocks like for example dolomite right dolomite is a 50 50 mix of calcium carbonate and magnesium carbonate ca co3 and mg2 co3 um, and the carbonate well you can absorb it in your stomach by uh, interacting with the uh, the stomach acid which will separate the magnesium and calcium from the carbonates but then you need to have uh, fats present in your diet for it to become chelated bioavailable in an ionic in an ionic form essentially so these supplements that we're talking about they're already bound they've already been processed by a plant so when you take something like the spirulina or wheat grass or barley grass or blue green algae or chlorella or those sort of things, they've already been fed the minerals. Or you can do it the way we do it, which is the uh, yeast that has consumed and absorbed and transformed all of these minerals into an edible form. And once you have the electrolytes, the trace minerals, in cor correct balances, you will see that your life, the quality of life, improves greatly. I already read the, read the list, but I'll pop it in one more time, right? Increase energy levels, protect your brain, improve your liver, balance your blood sugar, protect against cancer, protect your circulation and heart, reduce your oxidative stress, which is the aging stuff, strengthen immune system, more resilient, and decrease inflammation, which the, that's the hurt everywhere. There's a, there's a standard marker for inflammation, which is known the, as stiffness on rising. If you are sitting in a car for an hour or two, and then you're trying to get out of the car, or if you're sitting in your chair and reading a book or watching TV or whatever, and then you stand up, are you moving like that? Or does it take you two, three, four, five steps before you can straighten out and move 
swingingly. That's stiffness on rising. And that's a sign of inner circulation. That's a marker for you to worry about. And you see that on old people, right? They, uh, they get up and they walk uh, all twisted stiffly. And some are so toxic and so messed up that they don't ever go back to the unstiff body shape. <laughs> well, so what did I accomplish here? I tried to tell you that the cause of premature death, whether that is the stroke or the diabetes or the obesity or the whatever, all of the other ones that, and maybe even the heart disease and the cancer are related to how we nourish the bodies. The last example is this. Uh, I forget now the scientist, but they decided to take some chicken heart cells and keep them in a perfect medium. And that means the perfect medium was that it was removing all toxins all the time and supplying nutrients all the time. The heart cells kept on this re re reproducing indefinitely. They were not aging. They were, I don't know what it was, 100 years old and kept going. There was just no stopping it. And some some creatures have that. Some creatures have that ability like koi fish, right? Koi fish will live, I don't know what, 150, 200 years. Turtles will live like that too. Shark seems to live very long as well. They seem to be renewing indefinitely. <laughs> So that's it. Any questions? I'm going to check the check the chat if there's anything there. Okay, so Patricia says uh, she wants a copy of the book. Well, I bought it from Biomedics. And you're, Patricia, you're looking at that very link. So I don't know if they are offering it now. The uh, author was Steve Denk. And yes, you find it on biomedics. That's exactly what you're clicking on. So, so the answer is there. Uh, maybe I'll just go to the biomedics website and see if I can find it there. Uh, phone. They are somewhere in Seattle. Okay, here. They, the book itself, the content of the book is in fact, um, the content of the book itself is in fact published on their website as a series of pages. Where is that? <laughs> what did I click on to get at it? Previous post. Yeah, they have this uh, education series in there that you can watch. Like this is one of the pages. If you click on that, if you click next, you'll be right in the um, How We Rot and Rest. But it's in the education series on the website. They actually give away the... Um, short, easy version. Perhaps the book is for sale there somewhere. I'm going to their store now to see if they offer that. Uh, I don't see it. Maybe they stopped publishing it. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just looking at this thing. Okay, here, here goes. Here's the page where you can select the um, education bits. Here you can select the individual articles. Yep, that, that'll be probably the best. Okay. Well, 
that's all I have for today. Do you have any other questions? Okay, I come in wondering if you take trace minerals, selenium, chromium, and so on, daily dosage, absolutely. Absolutely, you have to be careful about the dosage. So, for example, the people at the CR um, supplements, whose products you will find on our website, they will tell you, take a teaspoon of this liquid a day, you'll be taking the right dose. Um, yeah, like, for example, selenium, the normal recommended daily dose is 200 micrograms of selenium. Yeah, you definitely need to watch that. And we have the same thing taken care of in the Exula superfoods. Right? The Exula products have had the mineralization balanced. And um, you will find it that when you take two or three teaspoons of that product in a day, you will have the right amount. It, it, it will just nourish your body well. And what's, what's really interesting is that people have found that they've um, perked up, came up to a lot healthier state of being once they get themselves on a one of these well-balanced nutritionals, such as the Exola products that I've just posted in. Mm-hmm. Is that true for all Excel products? Well, they, there are differences, but in general, the Excel 50 or the Iridesa or all of those, the baselines, they are definitely sufficiently mineralized. You can buy the fancier ones, right? Like we have the, for example, the Aura Max, which is for people who are dealing with significant endocrine challenges and so on. So that's going to have not only just the baseline minerals, but it's going to have a push in all directions. But the Iridesa in general will have all of the uh, mineralization that you require. So I'll see one more person typing. Power team. Yeah, power team is also well mineralized. It will be enough. Two to three teaspoons of power team a day for a typical 150 pound person will be just fine. And can you take the CR minerals? Well, you would want to take them on top uh, to try and compensate for whatever deficiency you may find, right? So for example, if you find that you have the uh, um, selenium deficiency, you know, the, the dark spots, brown spots, then you may want to run the selenium and see how you, how you do. I just ordered me a bottle of copper. So take note, see how gray my hair is. I'm just going to start taking copper. So I'll see how I do in the next six months. Watch it. Maybe it's really what it's promised to be. Okay, my dear, this is it for Martin. Today is October 16, 2022. Martin Patella, health coach at life-enthusiast.com. The phone number is 866-543-3388. I thank you for being here and thank you for uh, taking part in our stuff. And one last question for Lori. Do you need to know your metabolic type to take Exula? No, you don't. Metabolic typing is relating primarily to how you combine your meals, which is the ratios of starch or carbohydrate, fat, and protein. Metabolic typing teaches you how you can manage your weight and how you can manage your moods, the pH balance. The Exula products do not touch that. They are universal to everyone. Thank you everyone for listening and till next time.